Five, four, three, two, one. Hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like at the clock, and I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom coming to you live from my Seattle apartment. See? Beautiful weather outside here in uh, <laughs> Seattle apartment. Uh, just sent off the uh, Pearlicopter to send, get all your... Thank you for subscribing, by the way. All your subscriptions are on their way. We're going to be doing the Washington Capitals here right away. And if you know what I mean by that, that would mean that you haven't seen our previous videos. And that couldn't have happened. Everybody's seen our previous videos. But maybe you were you had the COVID or something and kind of in a COVID coma and didn't know about it. We are doing every single team in the league, what they did in their offseason and how they project in their future. And we got a couple teams left. Um, and by we, we're talking about... I don't like Peyton on the radio. Everybody knows Peyton on the radio right over there. How you doing there, Peyton? Uh, good, good. Just chillaxing. It's summer break or a winter break. I mean, not summer. It's winter. Um, so just chilling and going to be uh, making tons of videos. Really excited about it. And how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, as you can probably tell. Steel Flyers is here as well. Steel Flyers from www.steelflyers.com. All Sports Network, finest network in the land. How you doing, Steel? Oh, man, I'll tell you what. If I was any better, I'd be you guys. <laughs> <laughs> or, or we'd be John. from all, We'd be John, the GOAT. We'd be John, the, yeah. All right, well, yeah, yeah, we'd be John. Yeah, all right. we, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> we try really hard. Really hard, we may. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, Washington Capitals. <laughs> Uh, off season was uh, a lot of signing their own players, but there were some other things that were done. Um, let's talk. Let's talk first. I think the first thing that was kind of done was they allowed Holtby to go out there, and they didn't re-sign Holtby. So let's talk about that, and we'll start with you, Peyton. What do you think about the non-re-signing of Holtby and uh, their choice to go that direction? I think not letting go of Brain Hall be it, it, it was good. You needed a kind of a change. You had Samsonov coming back there, who Samsonov had a a great season last year. He really did. Halby struggled. He had an eight ninety seven save percentage with the uh, where's the uh, three point eleven goals against average. It wasn't that great of a season for Brain Halby. He needed a new place to go to, and so now he's off to Vancouver. Uh, I think it's a good idea to go with Samsonov. Samsonov was great. Uh, it sucks what happened to to King Henrik there. Um, but Samsonov, he did pretty well last year, and he's only going to go up for here. So uh, I think it's a really good move by the Washington Capitals. Steel, did you like that I did you yeah. deal? Or did they really even have much of a choice, two figures? Well, you know, he he needed to change the scenery as well, too. And then I also think one of the other things, too, uh, that we, we haven't really mentioned either was the fact that the Capitals brought in a new coach. Mm -hmm. Okay. And maybe that might not have been such a good fit with the coach. I mean, I don't know. I have no idea why they would not re-sign Hopi, the, one of the guys that helped them win a Stanley Cup, one of the guys that helped bring, give them prominence as to where they got to be because of his play. Okay, so but getting rid of Hopi, eh, okay, he needs a chain of scenery. They brought in King Henry. He was going to basically do the same thing that Hopi was doing, was backing up Sansonoff anyway. So what? Yeah. It was just an older guy. Maybe Henrik was, right? Lundquist is older than Hopi by yeah. three years. Ho Hopi's 35, right? And Henrik is 38 or something like that. Yeah. So, so it was going to be a one-year deal anyway. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so, okay. I mean, I I think it's an okay move. It it gives the, it frees them some money from them. It gives them the opportunity to bring some of their younger guys in that they need. It gives them an opportunity to re-sign some of their guys, which they did this year. You know yeah. what I mean? So I think that was a good move for Washington to get rid of Hopi or not re-sign him. Right. I don't know if they really had much of an option with their cap space. Uh, Hope you getting four million a year from Vancouver for was it three years? Was that a three year contract? Two years. Two, two years. year contract. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's mm -hmm. a little too rich to pay a back. What, yeah, and they, they are, and that's the other thing too about caps, boy. They don't have any 
cap space. They have zero cap space. I mean, they have a little bit of like one million on long term IR or something like that. But other than that, they they don't have any cap space, so they probably yeah. couldn't afford to give Hopi his four million a year. Even even that being a team friendly deal for for Hopi, you know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. And of course, the Lundqvist situation. They 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 did get Lundqvist for like dirt cheap, and that was looking like it was going to be a great deal. One point five million for him. Yeah, yeah. And I know. Well, yeah. I, I I know the king is watching right now, and uh, oh, we so we send it all out to you, king. Yeah, man. Uh, for get hope well. your heart, your heart, yeah. heart, whatever's going on with your heart, there, get that all sorted out. And uh, people are talking about how. Oh, you know, his career's over. This is the king, okay? This guy can can beat a heart condition and stop pucks probably at the same time. Uh, he's yeah, going probably. to overcome this, and I wouldn't doubt at all if you see him one more year. I wouldn't doubt King. I wouldn't doubt King Henry on anything. So I, you, I hope I, I hope you can do it, buddy. I hope you can. Yeah. Do it. And and thanks for watching this fine programming. Yeah, uh, right. Because because we we know he's watching too. Of course, well, of course. You know, yeah. yeah, of course. <laughs> Why wouldn't he be? Watching. Right. Exactly. <laughs> no, but you know what? Though? That's the other thing too. Look, here here's going to be the thing now. What's Washington going to do now? Yeah. Okay. That, that's because what I was gonna get into right, away. right. What a great segue, my friend. You like that? See, it's like it's like we've worked together before or something. Sort of, sort of like that. Yeah. So okay, go ahead, there. We'll yeah. What are we? Got, what are they going to do now? Yeah. yeah. What are they? Um, what do you? It, what do you add, Peyton? Yeah, what are we gonna? What are they gonna do now that 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 the king is is out for the year? They, they and and we know they're gonna need at least two more goalies. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a tough one for the uh, the the Washington Capitals unless you go with Phoenix Copley, who did play a little bit last year. Uh, uh, unless you want to go with that, but that means you're going with two very young goaltenders in him <laughs> and him and. Samsonov, <laughs> it's going to be a tough one unless you want to go after Ryan Miller. That could be a possibility, but uh, do you really want to go after that? There is Craig Anderson out there, but I'm. Pretty I was going to sure say, and say, Howard too. I think is available too, right? Howard. Yeah, Jimmy Howard is also Jimmy available. Howard, yeah. Like, I think I heard was hearing Craig Anderson was thinking about retiring, so I don't know if he's yeah. going to be really coming back. Uh, the really the only goalie you really got is Ryan Miller. Right now, unless you want to go after Jimmy Howard, um, who was an absolute dumpster fire in front of the, the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, he was not playing very well, um, to say the least. So I think you might have to go with Samsonov and your young goalie in Copley unless you have someone else jump up. Um, even then, you're going to be going after a very young goalie core without Lundqvist. Lundqvist was being brought in there to be a helper towards Samsonov and developing that young man's career into him becoming that starter yeah. for the Washington Capitals. But yeah, now you don't really point. have that. Yeah. Now you don't have that. And he's going to be floundering pretty much on his own now because he doesn't have the, you know, he's not going to have that mentorship there anymore either. Mm-hmm. And they only have, uh, what's his name, uh, Vanacek? Vanacek is a possibility. He did yeah. put up some good numbers in the AHL last year. Yeah. But, I mean... When we're talking about this type of year where you want you really need to rely on your backup goaltender more than you normally would, uh, it's a very di- this is a difficult thing for them to have to go. This would be the weakness that I'm a little concerned about with the Washington Capitals. Uh, now let's look at uh, since we're talking about the defensive side of things, uh, one of the moves that they did make was bringing in uh, Schultz from Pittsburgh. Nice little slap in the face. I love the way they did that. They did that with Niskanen. <laughs> now they do it with Schultz. Schultz, yeah. So let's see. Uh, what? Okay, we'll start Cause with Because they lost Gudis. Because they lost yeah, Gudis. They, they lost right. Gudis and they brought yeah. in Schultz. Now there's a lot of people that are they're poo-pooing Schultz. I'm going to start with you, Steele. Uh, you probably saw a lot of Pittsburgh games. What do you think about this signing now? This raised a lot of eyebrows to a lot of people out there. Mm, look. He's 30 years old. Yeah. <laughs> He's 30 years old. Um, he did get, uh, you know, what, a two-year contract for four for $8 million. You know four what mil. I mean? $4 oh, million yeah, a year. $8 million yeah, value, yeah. 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 <laughs> He's uh, okay. dropped off. Yeah, big time. 
Um, if say three years ago, if this was the Schultz of three years ago, then yes. No. Yeah. But, but some injuries and, and, and stuff like that have taken their toll. And I just don't think he's the same player. And I don't think he's even going to be at the same level, say as Gudis was like, I think this is going to be a step back with bringing Schultz in and losing Gudis for them. And I also agree with what you said too, Steve, uh, about the, um, the goalies being the issue here going forward. I don't think the Capitals have too much weakness up and down their lineup defensively, their forwards. I mean, come on, they have Ovechkin. They they brought almost everybody back this year. You know what I mean? This is where their weakness is going to be is right here is at the goalie position, mm -hmm. okay? Because we know it's going to be a shortened season and we know that he's going to need help. Because there's no way he can play all 56 games. I mean, that that would be ridiculous to try to do that. And then play playoffs on top. I don't know. I mean, that's just kind of where I'm coming from. With yeah. with Justin Schultz, now, maybe it was this the case that he was playing not that great because <clears throat> of the fact that Pittsburgh was already so badly defensively. Yeah. And they had injuries for the past two years, and Schultz was injured. But who knows? Maybe you, maybe McClellan seen some kind of maybe a bounce back from Justin Schultz um, that we might see. Justin Schultz was very good for the picks for Penguins when they were going on their runs and when they were oh, actually yeah. playing really well. Oh, um, yeah. It's just it's just he has to jump back and he has to start playing really good and you have to hope that he doesn't get any more injuries. And that's just been a problem with Justin Schultz's entire career. I even remember that in Edmonton. He was he showed really good times, but then other times he just he couldn't play very well defensively. This guy is not a defenseman that you could rely on defensively. But in Washington, you got Brendan Dillon. You got Nick Jensen. You got a new guy that you just picked up in Van Riemsdyk. Yeah. You have a lot yeah, of yeah. good shut down defenseman that I think could play not too bad with Justin Schultz. Yeah. It's a big risk. I wouldn't have paid him that much money. I would have paid him a lot less, but <laughs> that's probably what Justin Schultz was asking for was $4 yeah. million yeah. and Washington paid up for it. There you go. Yeah, I think it's a little rich of a contract. Mm -hmm. um, I will say this, that um, much like when we were talking about it in our Ottawa uh, video that, that we did for your channel, Peyton, which everybody will watch after this, um, the uh, Murray gets get it's hard. It's there's a big question mark with Murray because of how poor Pittsburgh's defense really, really was. Underratedly poor. It's really poor. Let's for, Jack uh, he, um, Schultz played with Jack Johnson most. True. In Pittsburgh. I mean, True. how do you judge how good of a defenseman a guy is when your defense partner is Jack Johnson most of the time? Jack Johnson was deplorable. And uh, what's his name? The uh, Rutherford tried to pin it on, on Schultz at the end of the year saying that Jack Johnson wasn't good because Schultz wasn't good. So we're about to find out if that's true or not. Obviously, Washington are. thought otherwise. And I agree with you. Getting the opportunity to play with Brendan Dillon, uh, defensive stalwart, mm -hmm. uh, may just change that game up quite a bit. I think maybe Schultz was just being asked to do things that that's he's just why, not um, there to That's do. why John Carlson They're plays so well. John Carlson yeah. has Michael Kempney alongside of him, and yeah. that's the reason why. I mean, Carlson's numbers defensively look like crap, but the only reason why Washington actually does really well is Kempney saves Carlson's life half the time, <laughs> right? Like, that's why San Jose doesn't play very well. You have a bunch of offensive defensemen surrounded around your team. If you actually have some good, solid defenders alongside of your pure offensive defensemen like a Justin yeah. Schultz and like your Carlson, it's the same with Dallas. Dallas has Alexiak and some really good, solid defensive defensemen down there that played alongside of Klingberg and Haskinainen but and made elevated. it a solid core. Yeah, man. Elevated. Great point, man. Wow. Yeah. I, that, that, now that you mentioned that like that, you know, look, we both agreed that, or, or, you know, Perlo and I thought that his contract was a little rich. And you know what? You're right. Getting him playing alongside of some better players mm -hmm. that are a little bit more motivated might elevate his game a little bit too. So, like I said, I don't really think defense is going to be a problem for Capitals. 
No, I don't think so. No, and that's why they went all. after the guy. I think that's yeah. why they went after the guy. They knew that they, they looked at his analytics, said that, oh, well, he's pretty bad defensively, but this guy used to put up, he put up 50 points before in a season. This could be a possible guy that could help us break out the puck. They didn't have too many of those guys last year, unless you're looking at Dmitry Orlov. But Dmitry Orlov is not like a pure offensive defenseman. He's a good two-way defender. So now you have Schultz that can man that, that second line power play line. Yeah, that's another good and, point too. Yep. And mm-hmm. can break out the puck really good. Yep, right. Yep. So it feeds off to Ovechkin, Kuznetsov, whoever's going to be going out there and scoring the goals. Schultz will just help that out more. His defensive, and I think a lot of people look way too much into the defense analytics. If this player plays really bad defensively, you shouldn't have him on your team like a dry saddle or McDavid, right? They play bad defensively because they're more focused on the offense. And that's what Justin Schultz is. If you put him alongside of a better defender, his analytics might not go up, but his offensive stats will go up and he'll start playing a lot better. And who knows? Maybe he will be worth that contract. Right now it looks a little steep, but maybe in the future, maybe a year, maybe a couple months down the road, we might be eating our own words and saying this contract was a great contract for Schultz. Uh, you, hey, I got is, no problems with that. <laughs> that is a that is an immensely good point. Yeah. Carlson would not be putting the points he's putting up here on this team on too many teams. I'm telling you right that right now. Yeah, they I agree. simply are he ha, he ha, he's afforded the ability to take risks because they are a goal scoring team. This team mm-hmm. is stacked in their top nine with when you've got Eller as your third line center and you have um, Tom Wilson and Verana and even Richard Panic down there can, has had 20 goal seasons. Um, Ovechkin, of course, Backstrom, Kuznetsov. I could just go on and on, right? So this that kind of offense doesn't need a top 10 in the league defense. And I don't think they do have a top 10 in the league defense. But I do think they have a middle of the league defense. And there's nothing wrong with that when you've got this kind of an offense. Um so I'm told, and let's go into a little bit. To, if you guys remember some other moves that they might have made, there might be. Oh, and you mentioned Trevor Van Reems, like nice little pickup for eight hundred thousand or whatever. <laughs> I've always liked this guy. I think this is a great little pickup. Nick Jensen hasn't really been pulling his weight as much as for his two million dollars, and I have a feeling Trevor Van Reems might be able to supplant him in the lineup. Mm-hmm. Good move. But um, we also have something. Uh, McMichael, are you? If you're aware of McMichael, uh, mm-hmm. this is a center that put up almost what was it in 52 games? He put up 100 points or, or something like that. I got, don't have it right in front of me. 47 goals in 52 games last year in junior as a 20 year old. Those are insane stats, and uh, you're going to be able to have this guy being thrown into a center <laughs> position. Maybe even play him on the wing. Um, that is a game. That could be a game break changer right there. Would you agree? Uh, I'll start with uh, with Peyton. Yeah, Connor McMichael had a great year last year. Of course, we you were going to be seeing him in the the World Juniors again. Um, I don't know if he'll be in the Washington Capitals line this year. He had a killer year last year, depending on how well he does in uh, the camps. But Washington's keeping him in um, in the World Juniors. So you might not be seeing him at the start of the year. You might not even see him this year. He might just be continuing to play in the London Knights whenever the OHL starts back up because there's no body contact thing that they got going on right now there in <laughs> OHL. Um, but Connor McMichael... Uh, he's a great guy. I think he'll turn out to be great for the Washington Capitals, but I don't think you'll be seeing him this year. You might be seeing him next year. And if he does jump in the lineup, I think he'll be a great, great second liner, maybe even a future first liner for the Washington Capitals. Wow, man. Can't even, can't even, <laughs> can I just put a cherry on that? Ding! <laughs> yeah, I, I think you. I think they're going to try to get him. I hope because he's, he has I, not, I guarantee he has you he's going to get an it. invite. Hey, he's, oh, most her, likely. Come, please come to camp. <laughs> he's got. He's got nothing to prove in junior. And uh, I watched like what I heard about him. I made a point of trying to find some junior games to watch him in. Whoa, what a slick, uh, intelligent player. Mm-hmm. That's what I say about this guy. Pure intelligence. 
He got picked in the 20, 25th overall in 2019, I believe, in the first round. Tw- tw- yeah, 25th overall. Yeah. And uh, um, he had some sk- – I remember them talking about a little bit of skating stuff and all that stuff like that. But even then, they were talking about just highly intelligent kid. And uh, what a great pickup at that. And this is why you love guys like, uh, you know, teams that really focus on intelligent players. And the Washington – Capitals have it done. Underrated how well they've done at the draft, by the way, for a team that picks late or sometimes doesn't even get first round picks because they trade them off. Um, they've done very, very well in the draft up and uh, o- over the years. So, um, final thoughts. I think I'm going to go with here. Final thoughts. I'll start with Steele. How do you think all of this projects for? The Washington Capitals in the upcoming season. Uh, There's going to be a pretty difficult division that they're in. Uh, What do you think? How do you think this projects for them for this year, all these moves that they've made? And and, uh, how do you think they've done as a whole to put themselves in the best spot for winning this year? I'll tell you what. I think the Capitals are one of the few teams that have re-signed all of their own players. Like what Philadelphia did. They re-signed a lot of their own players. Doing that has afforded the Capitals the opportunity to not have a lot of turnover. Now, they lost Gudis and they brought Schultz in, right? And they lost Holpe and then they lost Lundqvist. So the only other goalies they have are the ones on the team. And unless they bring somebody else in, which I can't see them doing because they have no money to do it. So they're probably going to have to go with what they got unless something happens during the year where they can trade for somebody or something, something, something. Okay, I I really like how they drafted uh, this year and how they've been drafting. Uh, I I really think that Peter Laviolette is going to be the major factor for the Washington Capitals this year. They were almost the division leader last year. I think they were the third seed or something like that going into the playoffs or whatever. I I don't see them dropping off at all unless the goalie falls apart. Mm-hmm. If Samsonov can't hold it, then 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 it's going to go away. But if he is able to play those 35, 40 games – Okay, and be able to hold it together. I think Capitals are going to be right there because look, Ovechkin, Oshie, Wilson, come on. We, he, this team is so stacked. And I really, really think that Laviolette is going to wrangle them way better than the previous coach. And he's going to have guys way more accountable. And I think he's going to wrangle this team a little bit better. I think if Samsonov stays well, if he's able to do well, and hold a 2.0, something like that, GAA or something like that, maybe if he can hold something like that, maybe, or even a slightly bit lower, and he's able to win more of the games, I think Capitals are going to be right there. I really think they're going to be right there. I, I, you know what? This team kind of reminds me of like the team that Laviolette used to coach down in Nashville when they were going <laughs> for like cup runs and stuff like yes. that. Yes. Except for the fact like their defense is worse, but their offense just dominates over yeah. Nashville, right? Yeah. So, like, looking at this team, like, I know a lot of people are like, Washington, dude, don't, they're usually, they choke and they usually do. They usually do. But this year, with a 56-game schedule, less games for Ovi, less games for Backstrom, you, it's going to be not that hard for Samsonov if he's still going to be playing 35, 40 games yep, throughout yep, the yep. season, right? I, I, You know what? This schedule is going to be perfect for the Washington Capitals. And they just got to hope they don't get injuries, right? Justin Schultz gets a, uh, a less of a year. I think this could be a very good year for the Washington Capitals. I think you'll be seeing them. Top of the division, second, yeah, somewhere around there. That's where I'm projecting this team this year. Yeah, uh, I I'm pretty bullish about the Washington Capitals this year as well. For as you guys are, um, the uh, Laviolette has got he's one of those two three year window coaches. But he is for a one year, for a one year, even if he's a one year coach, he seems to be able to just rally players and get them going in a direction and. Uh, 
fire. He's fire. That's what Laviolette is. He's like a fire under everybody, right? And this is a veteran lineup. So he doesn't have to worry about powder, powder puffing a whole bunch of kids. Uh, this is he can just go flat out and be what Laviolette is 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 to be. Um, I do think that they can probably they will probably find a way if necessary to fill their goaltending issues mm -hmm. if that is the case. Um, something else I wanted to bring up about Washington Capitals and part of the reason why they won the cup and part of the reason why we just saw Dallas go as far as they did. These guys are big. They're all big. This is an overall big team Physical that team. is going out and busting ass for finishing the, checks. Finishing checks. They don't get injured often. How often does Obi get injured? How often? They they don't get injured often as a team, and that bodes well for this. I'm really bullish on Washington. I've actually said I I I I'm right now. They're almost my pick this year, possibly to win the cup. I'm really that, at least out of the East, uh, possibly be there. Uh, I'm, it all depends, again, on, like you mentioned, Steele and uh, Samson. I like Samson off, but he did show signs of struggling last year at certain times of the year. He, psychologically, we're going to have to see how that's going to turn out. I don't know much about this Banachek guy. Uh, I do know that Copley didn't have the greatest numbers last year in the AHL. The goaltending situation is a little bit of an issue with me. But at the trade deadline, there's going to be a whole bunch of teams out there that know they're out of it that are going to be able to give up goaltending like crazy. And for a second-round pick, you're probably going to be able to pluck somebody out pretty good. I just think the whole makeup of this team has an opportunity to do some fantastic things this year. So... That's our final thoughts, I guess. I'm just having so that? much fun. I don't want to stop. <laughs> yeah, but we no, got to no, stop. But I mean, like, that was a great point, though, that you made because I I agree with you 100%. I, I really think that that's going to be the key for them right there is exactly yeah. with what you said. If they're not able to put that together, then then they're, they're just going to drop off. But if they do, man, I – I don't know about necessarily calling them contenders per se because the of the goaltending, but 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 but. Oh, I call them contenders. Even and for the, and for the future of Washington, you are looking at their prospect pool right now? They're stocking the shelves again. Yep, yep. They yep. got Lapierre this year. They got McMichael. We didn't they got even some talk great about defensive prospects. <laughs> there, there's tons of future players, especially when Ovi and Bagsham leaves. It's going to set them up with a perfect pipeline. For a quick a Kings, perfect team to talk about that they kind of started slowly rebuilding those stocks. And yeah. now they have one of the best prospect systems in the entire NHL just because they got so many good prospects that have such high potentials. I think Washington might be doing the same thing, especially with all their older players or good players are getting older and getting up there in age. Yep. Uh, their, yeah, their drafting and developing is up in the top five in the league and mm -hmm. people don't generally talk about how great they've done because they don't have the opportunity to have many selections because they trade a lot of them away but with the few that they've had and we just talked about McMichael um, they are bringing in some pretty fantastic players well boys and girls that we got us you we have stopped now but we're going to be doing this on some live stuff somewhere down the road. I can assure you of that. And uh, it's going to be amazing where we can just keep on babbling and babbling and babbling. And we will. And uh, we'll do it. But we can't right now. But we are going to give you guys a little bit of a plug here. I call him Peyton on the radio for a reason because he's got a YouTube channel called Peyton on the radio. He's doing his own series over there, which I would highly recommend. He also does. He likes the game. And uh, yep. I've watched, I'm not a gamer, but I've watched him do some of the things. And to me, it's funnier and all shit. Uh, he, he, he really is a funny guy who, uh, who, when he does his live stuff, he gets right into it, man. So P Peyton, thanks for coming on buddy. And thank you for no being problem. part of this year. Awesome. Steel, uh, is part of www.steelflyers.com who is also, I am part of as well. It's one of the finest in the land. Tell them a little bit about that and what's going on with you, Steve. Well, man, I'll tell you what, thanks for having me on. It's been a blast. Um, I love coming on talking about hockey, especially with great talent like Peyton. 
Uh, man, I tell you what, I really do enjoy watching your shows that you do, and I have checked out occasionally the gaming there a little bit. I, I I tend to be a bit of a gamer, but I haven't done much lately. But uh, I do do I do do very much enjoy watching. I tell you what, we got a lot of stuff coming up here with Steel Flyers. Um, we're going to be making some major announcements coming up here the first of the year. Uh, so be looking forward to that. And, and as, as you were right, uh, Perlo, we got the, the NHL Pearls of Wisdom is part of Steel Flyers. And we'll be coming out with a great show for that. So be looking forward to that. That should be coming out here the first of the year as well. So all kinds of great stuff. You can find me on Twitter at Steel Flyers 52. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's fantastic. Highly recommend you check it out. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for listening. That's our full 42, boys and girls. You go out and watch some football, hockey, whatever you do, and have a great day. Lots of love to you.